think you're the best. The best. Are we? Are we? It's so hard to tell when nobody's breathing. Hi, Margie Bramer with Easy Easel, and we are going to be painting jeans pockets. Now, if you like this painting, but you don't want to paint on your jeans, you can do it on a canvas, you can do it on a paper bag, you can do it on newspaper, what do you, whatever you have. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to be showing you some ways that you can paint with some different things. Maybe you don't have exactly what we have here, um, some different colors that you can use. So um, we've got toothpicks here. Um, we're going to be doing some fine detailed stuff here. If you don't have a fine brush, you can use toothpicks or even the end of a pencil. I'll show you how you can do that. Maybe you don't have um, brushes, regular brushes. You can use something like a sponge brush and um, even maybe some cotton balls. We've got some cotton balls around here somewhere. Um, so use what you have. Take your time. Take a deep breath. We, um, we usually do this in about an hour, but the great thing about this is you can hit pause. You can come back to it later in the day if you want to and just take it at your own pace. We love to paint with music. We're not doing that today because we don't need the background noise, but you should get some music ready and play it in the background while you paint because it's inspiring. So um, what we're going to use first is I have these pinned up so it's easier for you to see, but um, when I painted this, I did it flat on the table. So you don't need an easy easel for this. Um, you just need to have um, a surface that you can paint on. Um, so Things, other things that you are going to need. Usually I would use paper towels. There are no paper towels left where I live, so I'm using tissues. Um, and I'm gonna start out with a wide brush. Again, if you don't have a wide brush, use a cotton ball, use your small brush. Um, <clears throat> you can paint with your fingers. But um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna load up with yellow. So here's the colors that we're gonna be using. Yellow, blue, black, white, pink. However, if you have orange and red, um, other, other colors that we don't have, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the lightest color first. So choose your lightest color. Let's say you have, um, orange, red, um, let's start with the orange first. Okay. So we're going to start with yellow and I'm going to drag yellow up from the bottom here. I did forget something though. Um, hold on just one second. Tape. Um, you do not need to use tape. And this does not have to be masking tape. It can be scotch tape. It can be duct tape. It can be electrical tape. But if you want to keep a clean line, um, you can go ahead and tape off the edge of your pocket. So if you want to do that, go ahead and pause the video and um, take a minute to do that and we'll come back. Okay, so my pocket's all taped up. Again, you don't have to do this, but kind of take some of the worry about um, painting on the rest of the jeans. Um, if you don't have tape, just try to use a steady hand and avoid the jeans. So you can hear my dog click clacking through the room behind me. It's lovely. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put that yellow up. Um, and just drag it up into, toward the middle of the pocket. Um, so this is a little different from a canvas because you have all these grooves in the jeans. So you're going to have to kind of really work that paint in if you want it to show up. Um, and each pair of jeans kind of have a different grain to them. Um, the first one that I did here didn't have those deep grooves. And so, um, so I didn't have to work it quite as much. So you're just going to have to really rub that paint in. That's where something like maybe you only have a toothbrush to paint with. That would help to kind of get that paint into those grooves. So we're going to go about a fourth of the way up with our yellow paints. Just working it in to the grooves. Um, if you are painting on some darker jeans and you're noticing that you're not seeing the color very well, that's what I noticed with this one. Um, a trick that you can do is just add a little touch of white to your paint and it actually gives you a lot better coverage. So give that a try if you're, if you're noticing that the color is not showing up very well. I did have to do a couple coats with that last um, pair of jeans as well just because it was so dark. 
Okay, I'm gonna give you a second to finish up that yellow. Okay, I'm not gonna wash my brush off. I'm gonna leave that yellow on the brush. Um, if you already washed your brush off, no big deal. Um, you can just touch into the yellow a little bit. We just want those two colors on the brush so that they blend together. Now I'm going to dip into my pink. If you're using a different color, just use the next darkest color. Maybe it's purple. Um, and I'm going to work that pink kind of into the edge of the yellow because I don't want it to look like stripes. I want them to blend together. So I'm just gonna, you can see I'm kind of twirling my brush at the edge. Oh gosh, and maybe you do this. Maybe you get a little um, paint on your jeans. No big deal, as long as it's wet. If you use a little water, it'll come right out of there. If you let it dry, it's going to cure into plastic and it will be there. That's the, that's the point of uh, being able to use these acrylics on the jeans, that it won't come out. But if it's wet, it'll come out. So, um, kind of rolling that brush at the edge of the yellow so that they blend together. And putting some pink above the yellow. I'm going to use, um, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm turning my brush up and down um, to give a streaky look once I do get into the pink here. I want to, um, it's kind of a, an Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights look. Um, one, want those colors to kind of reach up into the sky. So once I did it again, painting um, with the jeans up is going to be a little messier. So you guys are at an advantage if you're painting with them on the on the table because I keep splattering. No big deal. Okay, so I want to make sure that I'm still blended down here. My pink got a little heavy, so I'm going to go ahead and dip, dip back into my yellow. yellow and we're just kind of um, blending some of that pink and yellow together. Another thing you're going to notice is each time you put a coat on, it's going to get darker. So you want to make sure that it's consistent um, and that if you put more yellow on in one spot, you want to put it everywhere because you will notice that um, it's darker in one spot and not the other. Okay, so we got a nice blend between the pink and the yellow there. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off. And I'm going to use that tissue to squeeze out all the water because um, I don't want water to seep into my jeans. Then um, we're going to have we're going to have uh, colors bleeding. So make sure that your your brush is nice and dry. And we're going to move to the next color, um, which is going to be a light blue. So I've got my dark blue and I've got um, white paint. I'm going to load my brush up, scoop up both colors here. Okay, and then I'm going to go over the top of the pink. Now, I don't want this to look like stripes, so we're gonna do a little blending in a second here, but let's just get that, um, that light blue up. So I'm using the side of my brush again so that I can streak um, down into the pink, up and down. This is a lot different than painting on canvas because really having to work that paint into the fabric. Okay, so I've got my light blue up. I've kind of worked it down. I'm tracking it down into the pink, giving that streaky Aurora Borealis look. You kind of just take and streak. You don't want to lose too much of your pink. And then I'm not going to wash my brush off. I'm going to dip back into the blue. You see that? And I'm going to go blue, just straight dark blue, streaking again down into the light blue. I'm going to take this all the way up to the top of the jean pocket. Cool to be able to wear your own art. You could do this on the back of a jean jacket, on the pocket of a shirt. 
Okay, so I've streaked that in. Now, again, not going to clean off my brush. I'm going to dip into the black and I'm going to go over that top of that pocket and bring down some of that black into the blue. I know I'm going fast, but the great thing about a video is that you can pause it and work on the different steps. So take your time, go at your pace. Okay, I don't love how this is super streaky here. I want to blend it a little bit better. I'm not going to wash my brush off. I'm just going to take um, my tissue and just pull some of that paint off. And this time I'm going to dip into just the blue. And I'm just going to soften the edges of some of that black and blend it together. So I'm going to let you finish this blend of colors and then we're going to come back and we're going to do the trees. Before we start our trees, I just want to kind of give a little bit of a glow for our moon here. So um, this, the great thing about painting on these jeans is that the paint is going to stay wet for a lot longer than it does on a canvas. So we can, we can move it and we can blend it a little bit. I'm just getting a little bit of white on my brush. And I'm going to go right under where, um, I said underwear, um, <laughs> I'm going to go right underneath where the moon is going to be. And I'm going to take white and work it. Now, I don't want to, we're going to work some color back in here, but we want that glow to be here for the moon. So I'm uh, just kind of twirling my brush, working that white into the jeans. Okay, then I'm going to touch into my pink. I'm going to put a little bit of that pink back at the edges and in, into the um, into the middle here because we just want to give it a little glow. We don't want it to be completely white. Remember when I told you earlier, if you darken the colors, in one spot you really want to do it in the others because it will show up on this denim um, so I'm going back over with just solid pink here to kind of give it some um, consistency oh, just got a message okay so I think that the um, the yellow and the white blended nicely, so I'm not going to add any more of that there. Just going to work a little blue in since I did change the consistency of the pink. I'm going to work a little bit more of the blue down into the pink here so I don't have a hard line. Just working that brush narrow ways up and down. Okay, so. I'm going to put my brush away. Um, we're going to, I'm going to show you how we can use the toothpicks to make these um, come. If you can look over here, we're going to make these um, trees. So um, I'm going to give you the basic structure of a tree. And then um, we're going to make some, some trees that look closer and are taller to give depth and then some that are farther away. We're going to start with one kind of a medium um, distance away. So I have dipped my um, toothpick, but if you have a nice fine brush, you can use that as well. I'm gonna alternate between, but I just wanted you to see what you could do with both. So I'm gonna start out with just my tree line. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, and the great thing about a tree is it doesn't have to be super straight. They're crooked and they're spindly. So I'm just getting my, um, my line up there. Okay, just, the line, it's a little, little bit wider at the base, not a whole lot, and then pointy at the top, okay? And then um, I'm going to dip the toothpick into the black paint again, and I'm just gonna go give a few dots at the top, and then we're gonna follow this pattern, and it's just gonna get wider each time. So he's gonna really zoom in on this so you, you can see. Um, so you can kind of take 
it's like um, crossing the T, but you want to bulk it up in the middle, okay? And then each time it's going to get a little bit wider. You cross the T, bulk it up in the middle. So I'm just tapping with my with my toothpick. This can be the end of a pencil too. Um, you may find that you like this way better than using the brush. Okay, we're crossing the T and you can see each time I'm getting a little bit wider. Bulk it up in the middle a little bit more than the edges. And you're gonna take that all the way down. I'm gonna give you guys a minute to continue doing that with your first tree. Um, I also notice, if you look at the original here, these trees are going, they're pointing, it's like flowers grow towards the sun. Um, they're all gonna be pointing towards the moon. So they're not straight up and down. They're tilted a little bit. So when you put your lines in, um, except for these, they're pointing straight up and then these are gonna tilt more toward the moon. Okay, so work on your tree there. Okay, we're gonna do another tree. This one's going to be a little bit closer to us, so it's gonna be taller. So I'm gonna start a little higher. I'm using the brush this time. Show you how to do that as well. Same thing, same concept. Remember, this is not a straight line. It's more diagonal um, pointing towards where the moon's gonna be. This one's taller. And then same concept. I'm gonna put a few dots at the top and then um, I'm crossing the T, bulking up in the middle. And I'm going to do that all the way down each time, make it a little bit longer than the first. Okay, so we're going to work on filling this tree in. Okay, so now I'm going to show you um, where to put the rest of your trees, and then I'm going to let you fill them in. So he's going to zoom in here. And um, so I'm going to do another line here. Again, this is still a little bit diagonal, not quite straight. And then these next ones are going to be little ones um, that are just pointing right up at the moon. And they're going to get progressively shorter. Okay, and then we're gonna start tip, uh, tilting in the um, other direction, just the slightest bit. It's not a strong diagonal. And getting a little taller each time. This is gonna be my tallest tree right here. And I'm gonna do two more on the side. Okay, so you know the drill. You're gonna put a few dots at the top Cross your T, bulk it up in the middle. Take your time, listen to some music, and fill in those trees. Okay, we filled in all of our um, trees, and we are ready to make the moon. So um, maybe you're not comfortable with a circle. That's hard sometimes. Um, you can get like a bottle cap and kind of trace it with either a piece of chalk or a pencil or something. And um, you might be a little more comfortable with that. Um, so I'm going to um, use my small brush. You can use a medium sized brush as well. Actually, I may go ahead and get out that medium sized brush, um, which just fell apart and I'm putting back together. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start with some white paint. And I'm going to create kind of a half circle here. Don't worry about it being messy. Um, we're gonna clean it up here. I'm gonna switch brushes. There we go. We're gonna clean up the edges. We're just gonna get that lighter color. So we're going with a half circle here. It's gonna be a full circle eventually, but we're starting out with that. Okay. So you've got your half circle. I'm not gonna clean my brush off, but I'm gonna go ahead and get just a little bit of yellow, and I'm going to brush a little yellow on the inside of that. Okay. 
And then again, not going to clean off my brush. I'm going to get a little bit of blue and I'm going to finish the inside. I'm going to really kind of rotate my brush to soften that up a little bit on the inside. See how that kind of blends all those colors. I'm going to stretch that out a little bit. Okay. Now you can see over here on the original, um, it's a little cleaner on the edge. So you, you can go back to your um, toothpick. I'm going to use my fine brush and I'm going to get um, a little bit of black and a little bit of blue because I want a nice um, dark line and I'm just going to clean up the edge of the moon there. I'm not going to go all the way around. I'm just going to do the edge. Um, on one side, the, the darker side of the moon. Just clean this up just a little bit here. Okay. So all we have left is the stars. Um, this would be a great place for you to use that toothpick um, so we're just going to go ahead and in the darkest area here at the top of the pocket, we're just going to barely touch, barely touching, um, with either your toothpick or your fine brush. And the hardest part about this is not following a pattern. Um, but stars can happen in little clusters and then further apart. You can put some down in this area, but there's going to be fewer because it's lighter and you're not going to be able to see those as much. Most of your brighter stars are going to be up top. And there you go. You have your painted pocket. You can pull off the tape. Um, if you want to speed up the drying process, you can use a blow dryer. your painted pocket. We've got a couple other tutorials. We have um, a beach painting on canvas, which you could also do on the pocket of some jeans if you wanted to. Um, and we have a t-shirt painting you should check out.